Riding a bike can tell you a lot about calculus. Now as I move along, if you know that it takes me one hour to travel 10 miles, then it's easy to figure out that my speed is 10 miles per hour. But really, I'm not going exactly 10 miles per hour all the time. Especially if I'm riding down a hill in a winding mountain road, I'm going to be accelerating. Every moment, I pick up more speed, and I go faster and faster and faster. Over the course of, a, of one hour, maybe I go 10 miles. But how fast was I going at the five mile point? What about when I stopped? If you want to know my speed at any specific moment, you have to deal with the fact that there's a, I'm moving at a constantly changing rate. This is where calculus comes in. In calculus, you can pick an infinitely small moment in time and use that to calculate the speed. If it takes an hour to go 10 miles, you know I'm going 10 miles an hour. But what if you measured the distance I covered in half an hour? Then you'd know my speed in half an hour. What if you covered my distance in one minute or one second? You'd get more and more precise, but it would become more and more difficult to calculate my speed. Now what if we're approaching an instantaneous speed? At a given point in time, at one-tenth of a second, one-hundredth of a second, one-thousandth of a second, you'll always have a number. But there's a problem. What happens when you get to zero? How far did I go in zero seconds? And what's my speed? That can't really be calculated because you can't divide by zero. But we can get infinitely close to zero. And that is how calculus works. Much of calculus is just about finding a number that approaches the limit. We'll be getting more into this later on in another video. Enjoy! This is Science Tutor Online.